Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Today we're talking about GeoGen. Now this is from a company called Jenga Effects, the maker of a magical tool called EmberGen. I covered it on the past of the channel. We're just going to jump straight in with GeoGen. You can see it in front of you right now. This is a tool for creating two things, trains and planets. It's commercial software, by the way, available in alpha. It is on Windows and Linux right now with a macOS version in the works. We're going to go ahead and start with one of the presets. We're going to show you first how they create train in this system or landscapes, whatever you want to say. And then we're going to show you how you can create planets using the same software. So this is an alpha. There is a 14-day trial available. Uh, Mac OS is in the works, but otherwise it is Windows and Linux right now. So you can see it's a node network. Everything is nodes these days, isn't it? So you can see it's a node network that goes together to create this volume right here. So you see the end result of it comes out to this render node right here. Your input, your very beginning is a noise uh, node. So you can see if you click the output pin of anything right here, you can see the source mesh. So we started off, this noise gets fed into this base mesh. Again, we click it right there and you can see the generated results. Any one of these things, by the way, uh, you've got mostly control over all the aspects of it. So you see various different nodes can be, pick a node over here and you can see what you could do it over here. So basically the different pieces can be controlled right here and you build these node networks together to go ahead and create your train. So you get a couple things going on here. Uh, this one at the top here is creating this uh, height map for, by simulating things like uh, erosion. And then we could do things like put a bunch of rocks across our landscape. So here at any particular point in time, so let's say here, uh, after our faulting, and masking height, mask noise. Okay, right here, between there and colorize, I can come here to this node, right click, and then we can put various different modifiers in here. So you can see here, you can do things like uh, terracing, faulting, I can do various different filters so I could simulate uh, erosion, thermal erosion, fluid erosions, make it a shoreline, whatever. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is put rocks into our world. So basically put a rock node in right there, uh, and then let's give it a random seed like so. Select our rock style as complex. And you see we're scattering rocks all around our node. So let's go here. Different seed, you're going to get different rock values. So basically, it is this hierarchy of nodes like so. And then you got cool control over everything you're working with here. So for example, I can go here to my output, go here water. So I could say down here, all right, water is going to be on turn water on like so, and then you can see it in there. I can raise the water level of it, and then I could controls coming in to generate like the color of water in our world. Speaking of which, here is the height map that's being used to create the train coloring here. So you can see there is the end result right there. And then at the same time over here, this is our, our mesh that's ultimately being generated. Uh, no, sorry, that's not it. The mesh is wherever this node ends up right here. So there is our generated mesh. By the way, you can take any one of these outputs. So for example, this mesh output, I could drop over here and I could go ahead and export that one out and I can export it out as a mesh, as FBX or OBJ format. Same thing, if I go here to my color map right here, I can drop that one out right here, export that one out as a um, color file right here as PNG or various different formats right there. So you can get your textures out of things here as well to work them into whatever game workflow you're working with. Also, you can pull this guy out right here and create a, a rendering for your viewport. So that is kind of the whole process as you go end to end. Uh, all these things work together to create the train that you're working with. By the way, for example, here we can do some pretty profound things. So I could start with a, a different base. So here we could create an island as our starting point and all the rest of this stuff is going to apply to it. Okay, maybe island was a bad idea, especially with water turned on. Let's go with the canyon instead. So let's switch over to Canyon. Oh, my water's way too high. Let's go back here, go to my water, and let's just turn the water off. And let's actually turn fog off as well. All right, here we go. So you can see here at your base mesh over here, you can do things, again, Canyon, a cliff, and you can control the cliff's edge, positions of everything, uh, change the shapes, things, everything, by the way, you've got control curves to handle a number of these things as well. And every all of the end results that you're going to get out of this are being updated in near real time there as well. So that is one aspect of it. You've got the train generation. You've also got the other aspect of this guy, which is planet generation. Now this works almost the exact same way. Again, a veteran, like a, a graph of nodes over here. So you start here again, almost always with some kind of a noise uh, node uh, as an input. It's just really common that these things are generated from noise. So you change out the various different random seeds here. Uh, here you've got rocks being scattered across the surface once again. Here you've got uh, micro creators being created. Your palette of node options are available over here. So for example, I could take this guy and say, all right, uh, let's change our creator. So 
we can just random seed. So this is changing the craters on the surface of the moon or of our planet. See the moving around. We've got two sets of them over here. And then we've got these guys over here. This is your weather mask. So this is basically your color rendering of your world. Again, you've got control of them over here, but you're gonna notice this guy down here is what's controlling the red generation. So you see your color eyes in a red zone and that's being come into the emissive channel over here. Well, what I could do is come down here and again, we can control it so we can change the intensity of it, have more of a lava effect as well. And there you're seeing the ultimate end result of uh, the, the planet being generated, basically using this node-based hierarchy. Again, I'm, telling, I'm only kind of scheming the surface of what's actually capable of. But you see here, you got a variety of different nodes here. Just right click on the surface. Your nodes can be generated this way. These are all the stuff that's available. So you've got the ability to um, change out how terrains are created and so on. And once again, that's the planet generation side of things. You've also, again, got the, um, the terrain generation side of things. Here is kind of a more complex node network to go ahead and create this train hierarchy combination of, you know, again, so they're using, they've got a, a run in going on over here uh, into the fog mask right here. So fog's being brought in right here. It's coming from this mask shape. You can see the mask shape in action right there. So you got control over how that should look, what the intensity of it is like so. So make it really sharp like so. And then I pin that out and you're gonna see that is a, just a straight fall off for where the fog is actually being shown here. So that's controlling that particular aspect you can see right there. So that fog, no fog past that point. And you use basically this hierarchy of nodes together uh, to create a uh, train. And that's the premise behind it. Again, this is a commercial software. It's from Django FX. They are again known for making Embergen, this program right here, which is just straight up black magic, by the way. So this is a tool for creating uh, fire, smoke, and explosion effects. Uh, again, it's being used by over 200 leading game studios. And when you actually look at uh, the, the studios that use their tools, uh, it's a pretty comprehensive list. So they are a, a well-regarded tool maker already. On that topic, by the way, they also make a tool called Game Texture Viewer. I covered this one in the past as well. It is a free tool, which is neat, uh, but it is for basically previewing and rendering your textures. It's got drag and drop support directly to popular game engines, GPU accelerated uh, visualization of your textures. This is a quick utility you can drop into your toolbox. Definitely one worth checking out. But again, what we are talking about specifically today is GeoGen. Now, an interesting fact about all of Django FX stuff actually is they also use the Odin programming language to create everything here. Not a lot of people using Odin out there so they're kind of cool in that regard and now i'm going to finish things off with kind of the negative so this is considered an alpha right now this is definitely an alpha product but they are charging for it so you can get a 14 day free trial right now uh but sadly it is commercial software even in the alpha stage i'd love to see during alpha to give it away for free but as you can see there is a definite price tag attached to it uh, so that is definitely one of those things to be aware of. And when you get into uh, the studio space, it is a lot more expensive. Although I think at this point in time, it's basically designed to be a pack-in or a bundle-in with Embergen as well. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is GeoGen, an alpha product for creating procedural planets, trains, and landscapes. Although I don't know where a train ends and a landscape begins. If you know the difference, let me know. Anyways, that is GeoGen from Jenga Effects, a very cool looking product. Uh, interested to see where it ultimately ends out. By the way, they also have Liquid Gen coming soon, uh, which is another neat product. But let me know uh, what you think. I know a lot of people are really impressed with EmberGen, so perhaps GeoGen will join in that route. Uh, one thing to be aware of, Again, being alpha, uh, they're saying that it's still an alpha and they have major plans to innovate far beyond what's available on the market right now. So this is just the beginning. So if you've used Embergen in the past and you have faith in them, perhaps it makes sense to pick this one up. Maybe it makes sense to wait a bit, but again, you can check it out, 14 day free trial, uh, and it gives you full access. Everything you saw today was done using the free trial of GeoGen. So let me know what you think, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later, goodbye.